Any info on kilts being worn in, U in the U.S. pre-modern day and not as part of a military uniform, uh, i.e. Scots coming to the U.S. slash Canada during the 1700s or 1800s? My understanding as of now, and this will definitely bear some extra research on Max and my part and yours if you want to, uh, is that actually you wouldn't necessarily find a lot of guys wearing kilts in the colonial period in this country. Um, bear in mind that a lot of the Scots who came over were coming over just like an outlander, um, coming over it. with it during the during or just after during the time of the proscriptions. So um, you might have tartan in your possession, but you were basically wearing um, uh, very much normal, not Highland garb type clothing. And it was, uh, you might have, again, you might have tartan in your possession, but you, you weren't wearing national dress. You were wearing practical clothing because you're going to go into the wilderness and try to set up a homestead. Um, not the kilts are not good for that. It's just not something they did. Um, was, was there maybe a few guys who were wearing a great kilt or something in the, uh, in the 1700s when they came over here? Like 1750s, 1760s? Maybe. But for the most part, it was... A military thing with the British Army, not a civilian thing with colonists in the U.S. Um, momentum definitely built, uh, and that's why you have Tartan showing up as, you know, just as you have Scottish national identity evolving through the 19th century, um, you would have some of that happening over here, too. So, witness the fact that the, uh, what was the unit from New York, Mac? I always forget the name. 79th. Um, they were funded, their, their tartan aspects of their uniform were funded by a guy who was very proud of his Scottish heritage. That's why that unit wound, wound up being in tartan trues. Cameron? Um, yeah. He, uh, he yeah. was Cameron? Cameron. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so as, as, as the fever started to take, more people would have tartan, but uh, have you seen any evidence of there being kilted colonists in the 18th century? Yeah, no. I, as f I haven't come across anything solid saying kilts other than military yeah um but i've seen like incorporated in garments so like right. i've seen it in waistcoats and yep. um there's one I th i'll have to root up the uh, article but there was one where uh somebody took a kilt which was their father's military kilt and used it as a backing for a waistcoat um, I remember, you, I I remember you talking Sass about spray, that. I think it was was the tartan. Yes, yes. Um, I have to dig that up. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, um, but it was things like that. I mean, you're still showing some heritage, but you also have to remember that the the clan tartan thing was not completely solidified in those early days yet either. So it's not like you were showing, you know, I'm I'm going to wear this every day <clears> to show my family pride. Yeah, you know, if you had some tartan in your wardrobe, it was just integrated into the rest of your wardrobe. And you had a mixture of lowlanders as well as a few highlanders coming over to the colonies. It was not like it was all clan type, clan associated people. You had just as many people from the borders and the Edinburgh area and stuff who were coming over to the colonies as people who were really wrapped up in the clan system up in the highlands. So, and I would also I would also put in there that um, it's going to everyday life of colonials and people in the 1800s. It's they're especially immigrants are trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to stand out as their own culture necessarily. They're trying to fit into the existing culture that's here um, and to assimilate into American culture as such as it was um, versus trying to maintain every single aspect of their existing lives. Mm -hmm. So you could you could you, you could, could isolate the way. Yeah, you could isolate to some degree. And some groups did come over because they wanted to isolate um you know millenarian movements like the amish and the mennonites being a classic example sure. but yes i mean the, the predominant culture of the colonies was anglo-british you know so yeah it was yeah. You, you wanted to make money or you wanted to have a successful homestead then you would need to assimilate to some degree yep but hope it doesn't burst any bubbles but Possibly. That's one, that's one thing I do. Gotta give Outlander credit that basically he is not kilted through the whole series. He is, his clothing adapts the way a lot of people's clothing adapted in the course of that time period. So. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. So. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Remember, if you dig the kind of content that we're putting out, give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notifications every single time we come out with a new video.